name is Eric Murray. I am the president of Cascadia College in Bothell. I'm also the past chair of the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. And it's my pleasure to be your host tonight. Uh, if you watch the Academy Awards, I promise I am not getting in my underwear and I'm not telling you. Uh, thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. So, uh, we do have a full agenda today. I have some announcements to go through, and I know we have a lot of guests who are not members of the Chamber today. So at our lunchtime, not only do we have our feature presentation, but we have some people to thank and some recognition to do. So we have a, a bit of an agenda to go through today, and it's my job to uh, get us through there and keep us on time. Uh, Rob Carlinzi from the city of Kenmore, who's our featured speaker. I have kind of got the hook uh, around his neck already. He knows I'll be pulling him off stage when the time's up, so we can get you back to your busy day. The Chamber of Commerce is called the Greater Bothell Chamber of Commerce, and it means that we not only represent the city of Bothell, but also surrounding communities, including the city of Kenmore. And today is a, a wonderful event where we'll get to hear the state of the city address from Kenmore. But we also, as an arm of the Chamber, sponsor the Kenmore Business Alliance, and I would like to bring up Annie Hartness from uh, Kenmore Key Bank. She's the chair of the Kenmore Business Alliance, that arm of the Chamber. And just to let you know that anybody can attend the KBA meetings. It's welcome to be a member of business of the community. But then we also hope that you consider chamber membership because the KBA serves and acts on behalf of the chamber and the events that it produces are for the chamber. So we'd like you to consider both of those options. And I'll turn it over to Annie for a 60-second speech. Thank you so much, Jared. Well, welcome again, um, everyone. And we are really, really excited to uh, be here. And it's just such a great turnout. And we just really appreciate um, your collaboration and your support between both communities. So again, my name is Annie Harkis. Um, I am the branch manager of the Key Bank in Kenmore, um, off of Bothell Way in Kenmore Buildings. But also, I am the chair of the Kenmore Business Alliance Group. Um, when this group first started, um, it was a very small, powerful, powerful group. But we have actually grown and have outgrown my space and meeting um, at the Key Bank. And, you know, the Kenmore Business Alliance Group was started to bring collaboration between the businesses in the city of Kenmore as well as back from the businesses, to, and back from the city of, of Kenmore back to the businesses. And it's worked out really well, because we've come up with a lot of great ideas. We're all there supporting each other. There's a lot of great members that actually have a lot of passion for the Kenmore community, but also for the Bothell community, because it, we're all both. We're all right there with each other. So I first of all would like to say thank you again for coming. The Kenmore Business Alliance Group does meet the very first Thursday of every month. We used to meet at my branch. Like I said, we have now outgrown my branch. So we now will be meeting at the city, the city of Kenmore City Hall. And that will be um, from 8.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock in the morning. And our first meeting is next Thursday. March 5th, and I also would like to reiterate that you do not have to be a chamber member to be able to be part of the Kenmore Business Alliance group. So truly, if you have passion, you want to learn about the group, you want to come and see what it's all about, please come on March 5th from 8.30 to 10 at the City Hall here in Kenmore, and I hope to see everyone there. Thank you very much again. I hope you yell for me after I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the very place that today has program, on the back of your program is a list of chamber events that are upcoming. If you want to be a part of the inner circle and not yet a member, we encourage you to maybe attend one of those events, see if the chamber's a good fit for you, and if you are currently a member, we invite you to participate. We find that those folks who participate in events actually get a lot more out of the networking and chamber opportunities that we present. There are a lot of folks who support the Chamber. I'm going to run through a few of them right now so that you're aware. We do very much want to thank our event sponsor, which is uh, Spencer 68, but they're going to get just a, moment, uh, a few minutes to talk to us about their organization, so we'll come back and circle back to them in a moment. But also we have some table sponsors today. The City of Kenmore has a table here at the back. Hello, Mr. Mayor, glad you're here. And, and uh, supposedly you brought your wife with you today, and that's right. <laughs> Got to be good to the spouses, right? Uh, also want to uh, thank Frontier Communications, who sponsored a table today. And we're right in the backyard of our third table sponsor, Bastier. Uh, welcome, and thanks for sponsoring the table at today's event. So let's give a round of hand for our table sponsor. Uh, 
Lastly, we want to thank our patron members and our community members. Those are folks who provide extra support to the chamber so that we can see our events happen. And uh, on the back here, our insights and programs, as well as on our big signs over there, we have both of our patron members uh, and community member lists displayed. Our newest patron member is Crossroad Sign. Are you here today? Yeah. Hello, Crossroad Sign. I don't know. Is anybody here from the city of Kenmore? Thank you for becoming the newest community uh, partner. Uh, the city of Buffalo. I think there's a little friendly competition going on, and uh, I, we appreciate that. And that too. At this time during the lunch, we also tend to want to, or we do appreciate a student in our community who has done exceptionally well. Um, and we are going to Welcome Sarah from the North Shore Schools Foundation. And she's going to talk to us about our student of the month who is from Inglemore High. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm a, a, a resident of Kenmore, very proud to represent the North Shore Schools Foundation this morning. Education is a vital factor in helping communities and supporting this recognition of the Student of the Month. Um, we're just a community with the schools, and we love being part of our chamber. Before I introduce the teacher, we'll introduce the student. Um, I wanted to share with you that on February 10th, the North Church Girls Foundation granted over, actually just nearly $40,000 to the North Church School District. It is impacting our students every day. Every elementary school is affected by funding with new teacher, classroom, library, math Olympiad, a support for national training for our district PE teachers. And this year, the national PE conference is in Seattle for the first time in over 35 years. It's pretty cool. District-wide, the North Shore Schools Foundation supports teachers pursuing national board certification. We support homeless, disadvantaged, and struggling students. The foundation also supports specific investments, such as at Inglemore High School, the sports medicine course, career in tech, career in readiness, and preparation, and of course, for Inglemore's wind ensemble and orchestra as we journey to Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center um, this April. Very proud of them for that. The foundation strives to be an integral part of the community. We hope that all the residents um, see and experience the benefits of engaged, inspired, and well-educated youth in the North Shore School District. I wanted to take this moment to invite you all to be my guest at the upcoming All Over Kids Luncheon. Um, there's little cards on your tables. Um, at this, at this year's event, we will be highlighting human and or helping human services, of course, of course, work that our students work on in the school district, as well as the district's teaching academy. Um, we'll be showcasing students, such as our student of the month, and, and uh, many wonderful programs that are funded by the foundation. The annual luncheon is the largest community event in the North Shore School District, or North Shore area and your presence is an important part of that experience. So, without further ado, like, it is my pleasure to introduce Nadia Bosch, a teacher at Inglemore High School. As she, so she can introduce the student of the month. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Nadia not only as an Inglemore High School parent, but also as a foundation member, as Inglemore has done a lot of fundraising with students at ASB, our associated student body has done a lot of fundraising for the foundation. Nadia is um, currently piloting, actually Nadia and Elizabeth Kowalski are currently piloting a study skills class for our struggling students. Um, the study skills class is basically like our old school study hall, but with a purpose. Um, a great interest of Nadia's entire career is working with uh, students with disability and students that struggle. Um, one of her current programs is Extended Hands, um, which incorporates students with disabilities um, as they try to go to church. Um, she is a 
formal staff sergeant. So with that, I give you Staff Sergeant Tanya Walsh. student perspectives, staff perspectives. She really wants to get um, just the feel of what is going to better everyone and make them feel welcome, feel important, feel cared about. She does a really fabulous job. She takes, you know, things, issues from school, she takes them home and thinks about them overnight. She meets with us personally to talk about these things. She really just wants to make her school and community a better place. She also um, runs youth group at church and mentors younger students, and she volunteers at retirement homes, painting nails of older ladies, which I just found out. Um, so she just really works hard to make her community, her world, her, her peers, everyone better. And um, she, she follows through with her word, and she is just an amazing person and student, and I'm so happy to work with her along with Elizabeth Kowalski, my co-teacher. Um, and we can't say enough good things about her. So, your student of the month, Rebecca Stegner. Uh, thank you so much. It is an honor to be selected uh, for the student of the month. I didn't realize exactly what this was, but now I'm very honored to do so. Um, I want to thank the foundation for sponsoring a lunch today for myself and my teachers. That was very generous. Um, so I, I'm surrounded by some truly outstanding peers at Inglemore. Uh, there's a girl in my physics, physics class who just got accepted to Yale on a full ride. So I think that, you know, that'll tell you, I'm just, I'm surrounded by amazing, amazing people who challenge me every day. And it really is an honor. Um, to be the student body president at my school. Um, in, in our ASB class of Associated Student Body, um, we have a class of about 40 students, and right now, what are we planning right now? We're planning a food drive, Munch Madness food drive, um, a school-wide talent show, a Mr. Inglemore male pageant, a blood drive. So we, we stay super busy all the time. And I love it. We love uh, planning school events and just making the school community a more welcoming place than just going to class and going home. We really try to bridge that gap and make school somewhere um, that students want to be rather than have to be. So that's kind of been one of my goals this year. And um, kind of future plans for me, I'm in the middle of deciding a university. So I'll go home and check the mail <laughs> as soon as I'm done here. Uh, no, but. Uh, the month of March is really big for anyone who knows a senior in high school. Um, I really want to study international business, and I hope to work for a nonprofit in the future. That's kind of my goal right now. Maybe I'll change my mind, but uh, that's kind of my goal. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much again for honoring me today. I really appreciate it. I want you to know that if you don't get the mail that you're hoping for, this is a great little community college down the road. <laughs> we have to give you a tour. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of our largest lunches that we've had since I've been part of the chamber for about five years. I really want to take a moment to thank the Inglewood uh, Golf Course for helping uh, 
support this effort today and, and bring this lunch together. And I know that we had a couple of folks from the Gulf of Forest who are today. Um, oh, in the back. But uh, thank you very much for having And I know that every minute we go over right now is one less question we get to ask Rob. So uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I do want to give a moment of time to uh, Spencer 68 and uh, Main Street Property Group. Uh, they are the uh, main sponsors for today's lunch, uh, helping to make sure that this could happen for us today. We want to give them just a couple of minutes to explain uh, their vision and priorities for our community. Kelly, and this is Kelly. Uh, right. Sorry, I got too ahead of my uh, Welcome, Kelly Bryant. Uh, well, great, thank you. It's uh, super to be here, um, and it's great to be able to be uh, one of the supporting sponsors of the first uh, state of the city for the city of Kenmore. It's, it's very exciting, and uh, I too very much look forward to Rob's presentation. So I will be quick, and my time went from five minutes to two minutes. Back to five, um, but I'll try to be, uh, be quick. Again, my name is Kelly Price, I'm the president of Main Street uh, Property Group. Um, and thanks uh, to the Chamber for allowing us to be here um, today. Of course, the turnout exceeded everyone's wildest expectation, and it's great to see the sold out sign on the front door as we, as we walk in. Uh, so, Main Street Property Group is the developer for the Spencer 68 project. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a bit. From our companies today, we have uh, seven or eight folks here, including uh, Jeff Miller and Spencer Filzen, who are actually part of the on-site uh, team at the Spencer 68 Project. There they are. We just opened the doors from a pre-marketing uh, standpoint a couple weeks ago. And interest from the community and prospective residents and, uh, has just been outstanding. So they've had their, they've been very busy um, planning and, and showing folks the uh, the neat project. Um, so why are we uh, interested in investing and being a part of the Kenmore community? I mean, frankly, the more we learn about Kenmore and its rich history, the more excited we are to be a part of the community. Um, many years ago. The city leaders in Kenmore really had the foresight to take control of some key property in the downtown area. And when we were selected as a uh, developer, we began working really shoulder to shoulder with uh, the citizens of Kenmore, uh, the city staff, and our team to develop and, and visualize and envision a project that could be um, great for the city, great for the community, great for uh, future residents. Um, additionally, uh, the city plans for the town green uh, have evolved to a point, you'll hear about those today, uh, where it's something that the citizens of Kenmore can be incredibly proud of uh, and enjoy for many years. So as I mentioned, Main Street is part of a family of companies. Uh, we also have Insight Property Solutions, which is our property management company that <coughs> operates all of our uh, developments and mixed use projects. And we have GenCap Construction, which is the general contractor that is actually building the Spencer 68 project uh, that you see going up right now in the, in the middle of Kenmore. Um, our goal with anything that we get involved in is to really uh, create enduring value. And so, what does that mean? Uh, to us, that means some, a project that has value for the community as a whole, value for the residents that are going to live there, value for the business owners that live and work in our projects, and values, uh, value for the citizens uh, of the city who can enjoy the new environment and the services that are, that are offered. So the Spencer 6-8 project represents really the first phase of the development activities that we're a part of. Uh, in Kenmore. It's 138 apartment units. It's really a development that has four distinct buildings. And we've actually branded those buildings um, the Lake House, the Propeller, the Burke, and the Trailhead, all signifying uh, important aspects of, of the community. Uh, the uh, apartments have a wide range of living options from studios to three bedroom, uh, three bath townhouse units. So it's a very diverse offering and uh, hopefully can meet the needs.
needs of, of, of the diverse community. Um, as part of our project, uh, the surrounding sidewalks are being built and widened. Uh, all the power lines in the area are being undergrounded. Uh, new street lights are being installed, uh, hanging flower baskets. Um, and all the apartments that are actually on 68 in front of City Hall have very nice outdoor balconies so that we can really get uh, feet on the street and eyes on the street and create additional vibrancy uh, within the city of Kenmore. Uh, part of creating great sidewalks and great places for people to walk, um, you know, just adds to the overall feel and, and vibrancy in the city. So again, we're, uh, we're also part of the uh, Town Green project and the commercial property. Um, we look forward to a, really a mix of uses um, that complement the Town Green. Um, I'll also mention that so far at Spencer 68, we have nine residents that have signed up to move in uh, day one, so they're part of our founding uh, community. So again, it's great to be here today. Uh, we've been welcomed with open arms to the community. It's been great. We've spent a fair amount of time at uh, the 192, at the Aroma, at Pagliacci's, and uh, of course at City Hall. Um, so thanks for allowing us to be the presenting sponsor today. We're also involved in uh, the summer music uh, in the park at St. Edwards, uh, the fire show at Lockwood Park, the play day at Rhododendron Park coming up, and uh, Christmas tree lighting that at some point will happen in the town. So with that, um, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. So that wraps up the development in Kenmore. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> we, we do have a featured presentation today. And uh, Rob, who we mentioned, looked over my shoulder a few minutes ago. He said, oh, I, I've got 40 minutes. He told me I had 30. He was so excited. You have 30 minutes now. <laughs> but I would like to bring up Rob Carlinzi. Uh, he has worked in local government for over 20 years in the counties of King and Pierce. He is a Washington native, and we will forgive his time away at Brigham Young University, where he got his master's degree in public administration. But uh, the prodigal son returned home, uh, bringing a wife and five children with him here. He lives in Kenmore with his wife, Michelle. And it's really a pleasure to uh, devote this time to an update on the state of the city of Kenmore. Please welcome our Sight. Wow, thank you so much for coming. It is so great to be here. And I just jump at the opportunity to tell our story. Kenmore has such a great story to tell. And I'm not going to be able to, be able to tell it all. Uh, in fact, I'm probably only going to be able to just give you the tip of the iceberg today. We have so much going on in so many areas. We have so much work going on in the background that it's impossible to, to describe it and explain it in just 30 minutes. Um, during my presentation, I'm going to talk about some folks that are really important to our city team. But actually, I want to um, kind of point out somebody who is my favorite person in the world. That person <laughs> is in this room, and that is Michelle Martin. That's here. So if you're not, if you have a business in Kenmore and you're not a member of the chamber, you should ser seriously consider joining because they're great advocates for the business community. And as evidenced by the Kenmore Business Alliance that was created a couple of years ago, that uh, organization is under the auspices of the North Awful Chamber of Commerce, and that uh, Kenmore Business Alliance is alive and well, growing uh, 
quite well. I'd also like to just introduce my coworkers that are in the room. If, if you work for this, if the elected, so I'll get you in just a second. But if you work for the city of Kenmore, uh, if you could please stand. City managers or office are here in the room, so really want to thank them for all the work they do behind the scenes and also for helping with this presentation today. Um, so, Kenmore is my favorite city now, and that, <laughs> that says a lot because my last city was Gig Harbor, that's where I came from. That's a pretty cool city, but Kenmore is even cooler, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But before I do, I do, I do want to give you a picture of uh, some people that I work with. A few of them just stood up, but this is the city team. Here, I know it's, a, it's not the best picture, but that was taken at Christmas time. And for a city of 21,000 people, we have about 30 employees working for the city. Uh, there's, a, there's a city really close by that has the same population as Kenmore, and they have over 200 employees. So does that mean that they're fat and inefficient? No. It just means that we do business differently. We're what you call a contract city. So we contract out a lot of our services. For example, we're annexed into a fire district. And the chief working is here somewhere. There it is right there. Um, and we're, we contract for King County for police services. We contract with the city of Lake Forest Park for public works. And so because of that, we actually have a kind of a small group of city employees. Um, but I like it that way. I love having a, a tight group of folks. There's lots of cross-pollination and cross-training that goes on. Uh, they're very busy people. Um, and I think that um, the folks I work with, I don't, I don't know a bad apple in the bunch. They're all passionate about public service. And um, they're always uh, going the extra mile to make things happen in our city. So I really appreciate that. Another group of people that are important to me and also to you are our elected officials of the city council. So we have seven members of the city council. The, the chair of the city council is Mayor David Baker, and he's here today. Mayor, please stand. We also have another city council member, Brent Smith. Please stand. Yeah, if I'm wrong, please stand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So these are my seven bosses. Yes, I have seven bosses. Uh, I just have to keep four of them happy. <laughs> you learn to count to four really fast. But um, actually, I think, um, hopefully, I think all seven of them are happy right now. I, I hope, I think. Uh, they just gave me my performance evaluation a little while ago, and I think it went okay. So, um, but this city council is so great. They're the, I'm not just saying this, but they're the best I've worked for. They're passionate about the city. They care about serving the city. They want to make a difference. They've got great vision and leadership for the city. And just as important, in fact, probably even more important to me, I guess just as important, is they're working really well together as a team. And that means a lot to me and to my coworkers. Things go way better when you've got all seven of your city council firing on all seven cylinders. And they're working so well together as a team. And it just really helps things move forward that much better, especially when they're united on what they want to do and what the vision is for the city. It really gives us a lot of horsepower to make things happen in the city. So what I'd like to do first is just briefly talk about our financial picture. This is real high level. In particular, I'd like to talk about our general fund, which is our biggest fund, and it's the most important fund that we have. We have lots of different municipal funds in the city, but the general fund is the most important. This graph here, I don't know if it's, if it's hard to see or not, but these pairs of graphs show revenues and expenditures for the past several years, actually 2013, 2014, and then the 2015 and 16 budget. The main point here is that revenues and expenditures uh, stay in target with each other. And um, we try to budget conservatively. 
So that usually uh, those outer ears that you see, you see the revenues are a little, usually a little more than we projected and the expenditures are usually less than we, we projected. Unlike some unnamed higher level governments, we actually have to balance our budget. So, <laughs> but I'm grateful for that and we do, uh, number one, try to make the most use of the dollars and put those dollars to work but at the same time stay within our means. This just gives you an idea of our revenue pie. The biggest slice of our general fund pie is property tax. The second biggest is sales tax. Just to give you an idea, we collect about $4 million a year in property tax and about $1.8 million a year in sales tax. Property tax is our biggest piece of our pie, but it's also what I call our flattest piece of our revenue pie. And what I mean by that, it can only grow by state law by 1% per year. So even if you might have home set or home values going up by 10% a year or inflation going up, going up by 3% a year, property tax can only go up by 1% per year, the total amount collected. So that's a bit of a challenge, but we uh, are working to stay within that and to tighten our belt as much as we can. Sales tax, on the other hand, fluctuates with, of course, gross sales. Um, Sales tax isn't a huge part of our budget compared to what other cities have. Um, for example, the city of Woodenville collects five times as much sales tax per capita as we do. So it gives you kind of an idea of the difference between cities. We're sometimes called a sales tax poor city because we don't have a strong sales tax base. We're trying to change that, um, but that takes time. And, and we're trying to grow that economic base so that we can have additional sales tax, but it just takes a long time to grow that kind of a base. This also shows a, a graph, which is a, a picture of the, the reserves that we have, or the savings accounts. So the city has about $6.7 million in unrestricted, unobligated um, reserves or, or savings accounts. So the biggest piece of that is in our general fund. Our general fund brings in a little over $10 million per year, but we always have about 2.7 million of that in a savings account. So that carries forward from year to year. We also have some reserves in equipment replacement and in um, uh, our strategic reserves fund. I can't even see it, so we're sorry about that. Um, but there's, um, the two, the two uh, pieces of the pie over onto the left, strategic reserve and strategic opportunities, those are additional savings accounts that the city has set aside for rainy days and also for what we call strategic opportunities as they arise. These, the 6.7 million is uh, what's projected at the end of 2016. So I'd like to talk about a few key initiatives, and I, need to, I know I need to do that quickly, but before I talk about some key initiatives, there's one point I really want to make. I'm only touching on the tip of the iceberg today, so there's many things that go on in the city that I will not be talking about. The chief among which is public safety. Public safety, the protection of citizens and property and businesses, is government's number one job and our first dollars have to go into public safety, and they do. And we have an excellent uh, police force led by our chief of police, uh, Cliff Sether, and he does a fabulous job with his uh, police officers ensuring that we have public safety. As I also mentioned, we're in the fire district with the North Shore Fire District led by uh, Chief Torpin. Um, also, public works and other services are vital to our public safety. So I just want to make sure that that's clear before I go into the key initiatives. These key initiatives are kind of, number one, city council priorities, and number two, they're a little more sexy, I guess, if you will. So these are some kind of exciting things that we're working on. But speaking of public safety, uh, the top priority for the city council is multimodal safety, and in particular, pedestrian and bicycle safety. And last year, the city council adopted a resolution called Target Zero. The goal is to have zero pedestrian or bicycle fatalities as a result of a collision with a vehicle and also serious injuries by the year 2025. 
So this graph shows uh, pedestrian and bicycle serious injuries and fatalities over prior years. And the goal is starting this year, if we can, to have zero. And the goal is to definitely be at zero by 2025. So we've done a lot of things along those lines. The city has been pretty aggressive in investing in some new infrastructure projects. One thing we've done on the uh, education enforcement route is uh, we've, we've met with the community, we've reached out to schools, we have built these little reflectors. Do you have one? <coughs> do you have one? I hope you do. These are so cool. If you're out on your bike or walking, you should definitely have one of these reflectors because they help you as a pedestrian or a cyclist be more visible to the, to the drivers. But we've been doing things like this on the education front to really try to help drivers be more aware and help pedestrians and bicyclists be more careful. We've also done some, some improvements, including um, the rectangular rapid flashing beacons at major crosswalks. These are arterial crosswalks that uh, do not have a mainline stop control like a stop sign or a uh, traffic signal. We've done nine of those on, our, on all, all nine of them. We've also augmented uh, our crosswalks with the pedestrian crossing flags. We've got numerous new sidewalk projects going on. We just uh, received word that we've got an additional $2.1 million in state and federal funding for new sidewalks in the city of Kenmore. So we're extremely excited about that. Our match on that is $600,000 for a total of $2.7 million on new sidewalk projects in addition to the ones that we already have planned. So we're being really aggressive with the grant dollars. We're, we are not leaving any stone unturned on applying for our grants. Chris Overlease, our public works director, has put a ton of work into to applying for those grants. It's not easy. It is, it is a lot of work to apply for those grants. And so I appreciate her and her team for, for making that happen. Okay, a big safety improvement, but it's also going to be aesthetic as well is the Bothell Way project, and that's coming up in just a month or two. We're about to award the bid for that project. This is about a $16 million project from 65th Avenue to 61st Avenue. So it's the next wave of improvements, the next phase of improvements on Bothell Way. You're gonna see new sidewalks, new transit facilities, <coughs> new lighting, new streetscapes, wider bus lanes, uh, utility undergrounding, better channelization, and hopefully, if it's like the, the prior phases of Bothell Way, hopefully we will see a 40% reduction in collisions or even, or even a greater reduction in, in collisions if possible. So it's going to be a big safety improvement, but it's going to be a big aesthetic improvement too. And one of the things we're going to be doing is we're taking the before and after pictures of the project. And I think it will be pretty eye-opening when the project's done. Please support local businesses during construction. This is not going to be fun for them for the two years of hell this project is going to produce. Please go out of your way. People try to avoid construction areas. No, please go out of your way to, to support those businesses. They will be open during construction. And we're going to do what we can to market that. Next topic is downtown resurgence. Kelly Price talked about that a lot. And he mentioned that the city assembled some property about 10 years ago, and that's the nine and a half acres of Kenmore Village. A lot of iterations and, and starts and stops have gone on this project over the years. But finally, something is happening. As you know, the Spencer 68 project is under construction. They expect to have one of their buildings open and occupied, ready for occupancy in mid-April, and the rest by the end of August. And uh, that is where the former King County Park and Ride was. And so here's some pictures of uh, the project kind of before and after. So the commercial piece. I think this is the more emotional portion of Kenmore Village, the commercial piece. Again, we have some exciting news to report that things are happening here. Uh, we are selling this piece to Main Street Property Group as well. And they have plans to demolish the existing buildings there and put in some new construction. So as you can I'll use the pointer here, the this area here, the city, just to give you some perspective, City Hall is right here. They plan on demolishing the building that's there, putting a parking garage, 
and a several story building right here, including office and residential. This building here is planned fitness use. And then you see this little pad right here? They have an option to buy that pad on the west end of the future town green. And they can only exercise that option when they have a sit down restaurant tenant acquired. And they have two years to do that. So let me talk about, well, before I talk about the town green, let me also talk about what's going on up here. This is the north end of the city hall property. We have a planned park to be built on, at the north end of the city hall property. It's in two phases. This phase will be the new skate court, and that's uh, funded and designed and should be under construction this summer. What's not funded is phase two, which includes uh, pickleball and basketball and a, and a play structure. That's not funded, but it is phase two, so we don't know when that will get started. So last but not least, oh, by the way, we are keeping the post office for now. The city is not selling the post office. And the post office just uh, extended their lease for another five years, which was good. And as you know, Kimball Camera, our anchor tenant is, uh, obviously, they just moved in about a year ago, and they're going gangbusters and doing well. And we do see them as, as an anchor for the site. So the town green, this is what's really exciting, and I think this is what a lot of our residents have been asking for a long, for a long time. And that's that community gathering space, that identi identifiable sense of downtown, sense of place, a place where we can come gather and call our own, a community living room, if you will. And here's an expanded version of, of that. So this is at the corner of 68th Avenue and Northeast 181st Street. And we have a town green going in. And again, on this west end will be that future restaurant pad. And I'll talk about the building in just a second, but the town green will include a water feature with the jets coming out and a flooding effect and a two-sided waterfall. This will be a great place for kids to play in summertime. And in addition, We've got some other features and I don't have time to go over them, but I do want to talk about one really cool feature. Are you ready for this? Hot rocks. <laughs> so we've got, we're gonna have several boulders right here. They're kind of polished river rocks. And they're gonna be heated in the winter. And you, you'll be able to sit on them and get a little warm and hang out a little bit. There's gonna be about five of them. And um, they cost about a dollar per day per rock to heat. So um, we think it'll be a fun feature, an attractive feature. We have some other features in this project that are going to surprise and delight our residents and visitors. But I think I'm just going to surprise and delight you when the project's done. You can discover those for yourselves. But we are planning our own community building. And this is in keeping with the downtown plan for a community center. We're doing our own community center, but it'll be um, kind of a, a community center with an entrepreneurial twist. And what I mean by that is we're actually going to be leasing a portion of this building out to future retail. And what we're hearing from our citizens is they want food retail. So coffee, bakery, uh, ice cream, yogurt, that type of thing. And so we are actually about to start a request for proposals and we've got a couple of citizens helping us and advising us on this request for a proposal. Nicole, Nicole Soares is one of them that's going to be helping us with this, but helping us select some good um, retail uh, tenants to help us with the space. Why have retail tenants in this building? And I'll talk about the purpose in the building in just a second. Number one, to help offset the cost of operating the space. But number two, to meet the daily needs, help meet the daily needs of our citizens. And number three, to activate and put eyes on the space. So this space is going to be a gathering area for the community year-round. Town greens are great three, four months out of the year, but what about creating that sense of place, that gathering 12 months out of the year? So we have funded this gathering space here internally, and we'll have a big bay door. We call it the bad, the big audacious door. And it will open out onto the town green in the summer and kind of blur the lines between the indoor and the outdoor space. We're also going to have a two-sided fireplace. This will be activated. We will program the indoor and the outdoor space with things like ballet recitals, violin recitals, book clubs, 
uh, local service club meetings. Uh, the list goes on. We were, we're going to be offering it as free space to the community. Hopefully there will be some synergy here between the retail and the community spaces. We are super excited about this. How are we paying for this? We are using the proceeds from the sale of the properties and we're reinvesting them back into the site. So to give you some 3D perspectives of this property, and I appreciate Main Street uh, Property Group and GGLO, their architect, for producing these. Here's a looking east perspective. You can see the town green and the building I was just talking about, the fitness use and the proposed office and residential space back here. This zooms out a little bit, gives you a little more perspective. This is the restaurant building, it's, so it doesn't, it's just kind of a, a boring shoebox for now, but because it's not designed, but um, it'll, it'll be definitely harmonious with the rest of the site. So here's a really fun set of slides I'd like to show you. This is Kenmore Village in the 1950s. <laughs> so and I, we got this from the Kenmore Heritage Society book. And you can see the movie theater screen right there, and the, uh, the drive-in movie theater. It was just a field with a little farmhouse. Let's fast forward about a decade. Wow. It, the, the, the fire boat here kind of hides things, but you can still see the movie theater back here. Of course, fast forward to now. This is what it looks like. And are you ready for Kenmore Village in the near future? Here we go. So that's what we hope to achieve. Again, the, the pavilion building and the town green are funded and under final design, we expect to be under construction on the pavilion, pavilion building in town green at the, in late summer, early fall of this year and open in the first half of 2016. I consider Lake Point to be part of our downtown. And Lake Point is what we call our big kahuna. It is the last property of its kind on Lake Point, and I'm a believer in it. And if there was a cheerleading squad for Lake Point, I would be one of the head cheerleaders. I believe in it, and I, I believe it can happen. Right near, now, Pioneer Towing, the owner of Lake Point, is in uh, talks and in a contractual relationship with a developer who is spending money on Lake Point. So that is a very encouraging thing. But this project, Lake Point, has the ability to transform Kenmore many, more than any other project. I'd like to quickly go through some of our business and jobs development programs. We have a new business directory for our business <coughs> registration program. Nancy Owsley and Teresa McAllister have done a great job heading this program. But it's a way of putting all Kenmore businesses in one directory. And the website for that is findkenmore.org. Our business incubator is also going well. We've had um, some graduates from this program already. This is a slide showing some of the uh, businesses that have been through or are currently in our business incubator. What I love about the business incubator is it brings primary industry jobs to the city. And you can ask me later what I mean by primary industry. So where is the bond? Where is it? Because in cities, so many times, we're developing policies and budgets, and those can get kind of boring and kind of bureaucratic. And we always have to be asking ourselves, where is the fun? Well, I described some of it just a minute ago in our future town green, what we'll be doing there. But I also want to talk a little about what we've been doing with parks. And one example is North Shore Summit Park in the North Shore Summit neighborhood. This is a picture of it before construction. This is a picture of it after construction. This, was a, this will be a really neat project that will benefit that uh, part, of the, part of the city for a long time. I also mentioned our skate park. That's going under, to be under construction this summer. And also, get me to the water. Um, that's also part of where's the fun. When we survey our citizens, always near or at the top of the list is connect us with the water. Get public access to the water. So we take that seriously, and we are doing a lot of things that I, I can't, I don't have time to go into now. We're working with the George Pocock Foundation in the Washington State Legislature to help us fund a new boathouse at Rhode Denver Park. We've done some improvements at uh, Lago Park. 
But the city also recently acquired a new property at the confluence of the Sammamish River and Swamp Creek. So we call it an extension of the Squire's Landing Park. What's great about this facility, it has a vested dock and boat storage. And we've been able to work with a newly formed group called the Kenmore Waterfront Activity Center. And they are, in exchange for um, being able to store their boats on the property, they are providing public hand-powered watercraft programming to our citizens. And we encourage people to sign up. They got kind of a late start. They started kind of late summer, fall of last year. And so they really expect to take off uh, and, and get a lot more folks um, signed up this summer. The bottom right picture is a picture of a, a sprint kayaking race that was held last October. And Olympic gold medalist Greg Barton is right there. He's three-time gold medalist in this Olympic sport. And he won the race, by the way. <laughs> Another thing that the Kenmore Waterfront Activity Center is putting on is our dragon boat program. A dragon boat is a 20-person canoe. It's a very social sport. All people, all shapes, sizes, ages can participate in it. And we have it here in Kenmore, and they do it several times a week in the dark, in the cold, in the rain. People love it. And you can uh, uh, sign up and get th uh, three free paddles, and the, anything after that is $100 a year, which is a lot better than a fitness club membership. We also had our Kenmore Hydroplane Cup. We're going to be doing that again on April 11th. What a great way to remember our past. And last but not least, I want to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. And this doesn't really quite show it, but do you see that little girl right there? I don't know if you can see her face, but that face, that face is what we're after in the city of Kenmore. That face, that smile. We want all of our citizens to experience that face. But maybe not even, not even momentarily, but ongoing. We want to be a part of it. Can we guarantee that? No. But we as a city can help facilitate that face. And one way we can facilitate that is through volunteerism. And this is something that I'm just, uh oh. <laughs> this was my punchline. We need a volunteer. <laughs> so, one thing that I'm really, really proud of and what my coworkers done, we recently hired a new parks, or a new uh, events and volunteer coordinator named Cindy Shelton. And uh, she's driven a lot of new volunteer programs for the city. And I don't know if you can see this graph, but this shows exponential growth in volunteer hours in the city of Kenmore. And that's what we are all about. We are all about promoting that sense of engagement and ownership in our city. We, are, we've, we have now leveraged more than uh, a, a full-time equivalent employee in volunteer hours uh, just in 2014. So that's what we're all about. We're about creating that face in the community and helping our citizens achieve that quality of life that we all want. Thank you very much. The enthusiasm is contagious, right? And you just had 120 of those faces for the moment. So it's incredible in that. And, and great job, Rob, the, where you brought Kenmore in the last few years is just tremendous. So nice job to you. And it's a pleasure to get to know you uh, through our relationship. Do you have questions? Yes, we have. That's why I was going to say, if you can be concise. Okay. Right. We'll take two questions. Back in the back, I both want to put a caveat on there. I think Shelby Price is also a candidate for questions if you want to ask. Okay. Be on deck. Yep. Susan. So, kind of two questions. One's technical. We just, my husband and I just walked to Squires Landing in addition, and it sure looks like you're going across private property to get there. So, yeah. I'm just wondering what that perception is going to be. But the second question is what did it take to get camera signs on I 5? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Those are softball questions. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, we still have a lot of work to do on a new property at Squires Landing, including making it more visible and, ex and feeling more accessible to the public. Because when you go onto that property, you see that, that manufactured home and you're like, am I in the right, am I supposed to be here? So we've got to improve our signage. Part of it is working out an issue with a neighboring property on where we can put the sign and where the easements are and things like that, some technical stuff. But we fully intend to make it more inviting and put up better signage for the public. And then uh, Nancy Owsley and Chris Overlease uh, had a lot to do with getting that signage on I-5, uh, directing to Ken Moore. We also had applied a lot of pressure at the upper levels of the wash dock to make that happen. Also, when I-405 is going to be done, the Seattle big overhead sign directing you to um, 522 from 405, the Seattle uh, word is going to be replaced with Kenmore, I'm told. So it took a lot of lobbying efforts on the part of my coworker, and also um, Mayor Baker did a lot of the heavy lifting there, too. One more question. Returning. There, you got it. Got a point about the spot. So you, you said the Olympic medalist came in first in that uh, in that kayak race. Who came in second? Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, his name is Ben Carlinzi. <laughs> cities and our businesses, it's exactly what the Chamber's about. And it's not just Buffalo, it's the greater Buffalo region, uh, including Kenmore. So uh, we hope that you'll be interested in a Chamber membership, and our staff is at the back table there, and they would be happy. Raise your hand to the Chamber staff, and they would be happy to talk to you. One great benefit of membership is that you get to be in our Goods and Services Guide, which goes out to the community. And chamber members are automatically a part of that. I'm going to introduce uh, Renee Walden briefly to come up and just talk a little bit about becoming a part of the Goods and Services Guide. And she is from the uh, Buffalo, Kenmore, Kirkland, Everywhere Report. Thank you. <laughs> we are pleased to partner again with the Buffalo Chamber in producing their upcoming annual directory. And we're just now kicking off sales into this. And so members have an opportunity to get listed in those at no charge. So if you're not currently a member of the chamber, you should be, because you want to expose your business in this annual guide that gets distributed throughout Bothell. And this year, we're also going to increase our circulation and include Kenmore as well. So more of a reason to get involved in that. We also offer advertising in this. So if you're interested in promoting your business even further beyond that, please see Felice, and she has um, some flyers for you. Thank you. How do people get mailed out, or is it uh, picked up at places, or what? Picked up at places, but we are also awful and Kenmore reporter, so we circulate this within our newspaper once a year. Very cool. Thank you. And coming up in a few days, we got the Shamrock Shuffle coming, and that's a, a wine walk event that we have on this country village. And I would like to, uh, right now, give away two free tickets to the event. So if you haven't put your business card in the basket yet, we got to encourage you to do that, because we're going to choose out some events at our door prize today. We know about from Ireland today. We uh, love giving away prizes at the end of events, and so today's door prize are two tickets to our Shamrock Shuffle, wine, and beer walk. We have got a card over here. We're going to pick those out. As we're collecting those, and those come back up front. Very sincere thanks to the Spencer 68, to Main Street Properties, Kelly. Wonderful things that you're doing with the community. Thank you for the investment in the community. Thank you to Rob, City Council, for investing in the Kenmore community as well. Uh, what a wonderful day, and, and it's great to have this as a highlight. So let's pick our door prize winner. One, one or two cards. One card, two tickets. One card for two tickets. <laughs> Marty Pace, Evermark, LLC. Are you here still? There you go. Thank 
Thank you very much for being here. Safe travels.